Hello, everybody. With plenty of highly ranked teams taking L's within the last week, I'm here to tell you that if you consider yourself even slightly more of an underdog than TCU was in their recent upset win over Oklahoma, then you are in the right place. Recording live from somewhere, this is one and done. Get out the insurance cards, get out the co-pays. The office is open, my friends. Brought to you by DrRoto.com. It's time once again for everybody to come aboard that Green Screens Media Train. Welcome to One and Done, your fast break of college basketball information. Powered by DrRoto.com. I am your oftentimes humble host. My name is Jay Heinrich, the conductor of the aforementioned Green Screens Media Train. Back in the engine car, ready to steer this thing right along the DFS tracks that we love to ride. Follow me on X at Dr. William Cannon. And if you follow me during the show, I will follow you back as soon as we get off the air. Guaranteed. Hit that follow yeah, button over there. I ain't lying. If I'm lying, I'm flying, and I'm not going to have to bring my ass back down, I promise you. But let's get right to one of the absolute best in the business to do it. He is El Capitan. There we go. Underneath there. El Capitan himself, the captain of the Green Screens Media (coughs) Ship. Follow him on X at MC Holland 34, the OG Money Mike, Mr. Mike Holland. What it do, baby? Doing good, man. We got another big Saturday slate coming up uh, tomorrow, so looking forward to it. Got uh, got a little bit of a sweat tonight. We'll see how that uh, Iowa-Nebraska game does. So hopefully by the end of the show we can get you either a happy update or a sad update. But, uh, no, it's great, man. I know we're up to seven hundred and over 720 subscribers, so uh, pretty pumped. And, uh, yeah, man, I'm looking forward to it because uh, – it's one of those times now where football's kind of moving to the side just a little bit, just a little bit, and uh, your boys are going to be locked and loaded uh, coming up with a bunch of stuff and material for uh, for the next two, three months. So let's get locked in and, and ready to go. No doubt about it. That live chat is already on fire. But before we get to that, he is last in the intros, but right here. First in your hearts the Baron of Bread of Green Screens Media, and you can find him in those Twitter streets at Fantasy Nav. He is Eric the Blue. That is Eric Aroma. What's happening, man? Man, I'm out here still recovering from Whiplash, right? Like, we got got that nice, big, juicy slate from DK a few days ago. Thought that that was a sign of things to come, and then they smacked us right back down. 12-gamer tomorrow but not exactly the type of prize pools that we're looking out there. So I think what we'll have to do as we come through the slate is have to resign to the fact that one of us here, one of us watching is probably going to ship 2K. One of us is probably going to punch uh, a, a qualifier ticket, right? And, uh, you know, all said and done, that's a, that's not a bad little Saturday, right? So definitely looking forward to jumping into this one. And Jay, like you mentioned, that comment section is already on oh. fire. We've got Shane. What up, Shane? Saying, hey, Eric, hey, Mike, Jay, we haven't met, but hey, you will meet Shane someday. He is a fantastic guy. And we've got the master of the single entry, Corey McDaniel. What's up, fellas? Time to live in that old mid tomorrow. I I think that's why Corey's shipping all these all these single entries, right? (laughs) He's just the mid, he's just the mid-tier king. Cam checking in. What up, fellas? Some guy named Chris (laughs) Napier. Nape C. Hustle himself, ready there for the is. weekend. And we got, last but not least, Brock Erickson. Playoff it's NFL doesn't help the prize pools on yeah. Saturday. You are yeah. absolutely right. But that will be out of the way soon enough. We appreciate you swinging through tonight. Absolutely. We appreciate that. Everybody hopping in that live chat already. Keep it going all show long. We'd love to hear from you. We're going to drop a poll out there now. We see a bunch of you already watching in the lobby, hanging out. Drop a line in the old uh, in the old comment section, the, the live chat, the comment section if you're watching later. But as you can see, there is a poll right now that is live. If you're watching on YouTube there. And we, we, want, to, we want you to let us know here. 
We want you to let us know. How long have you been watching One and Done? Is this your first time hanging out with your broskies in basketball? It might be, and that's okay. What it do? Welcome. Let us know if it's your first time. You've been around for about a month, uh, maybe uh, just this season, or are you one of those day ones you've been around for a while? No matter what it is, let us know what that is in our poll. Make sure you hit that up for us right now. And, of course, Cam, you know, who him and Mama Ooh. Rocks have seemed like they've they got had the playbook. show sheets, basically. They've got the playbook <laughs> hanging out. The call is coming from inside uh, the house. The call is definitely. Cam, we love you and, uh, you and Mama Rocks. So just drop your cores in there so we can see if we are spot on or if we are – uh you know way off so yeah we'll uh we'll, we'll check it out all right good deal we'll hit those everybody hit those uh hit that poll for us if you can see it and let us know we see some of you there on twitter and it might not be showing up there for you there but uh but yeah thanks for hanging out with us and uh let's get right to this like you know we like to start with an overview here so um I'm going to start with Eric actually first. Let's go with Eric for your overview of tomorrow's slate. We, we've had some where the, the price uh, king has, uh, has been alone up at the top, and it, and it feels like tomorrow just looking at these initial numbers on the slate, um, it's a little bit more crowded in, the, uh, in the, uh, the premier, if you will, section, I guess. Yeah, it is. Uh, it is definitely crowded up top. Very top heavy pricing for tomorrow. Seventeen guys at eight K or more. Right. So a lot of these decisions that we're going to be making are, um, you know, going to have to factor in opportunity costs. Right. If you're paying up for um, for one player, that's you know that's obviously going to limit your ability to get exposure to a a second player. Right. So um, you know how we navigate the high tier is going to be a big key. To tomorrow's slate um you know as we are now a couple weeks into conference play these rotations are continuing to get tighter and tighter right plenty of them are now down to like six seven guys over 20 minutes so definitely like to see that helps us forecast who is going to get all of the run and a good amount of the usage on tomorrow's slate and then lastly i mean there are some real tough road environments on this slate right so you know there there's a there's a point where like we're we're probably going to have to start boosting up some, you know, some, some home underdogs to, uh, you know, to perform a little bit better in the friendly confines of that home gym. So those are the three things that, that jump out to me, Mike, anything else that you think we should kind of underscore about this slate, uh, from a, from a big picture level? Yeah. I mean, the first thing you look at, right, is, is key injuries or, you know, questionable guys. There's uh there's not that many, but that doesn't mean uh, that that can't all change within 10 minutes of the first game starting. So, um, no, no major value to kind of sticking out here, which is going to make it tough to pay for, uh, what do you say? There's like 18 or 19, 17 guys up there uh, above 8,000. So that's going to be kind of tough, man. Something to monitor before lock, uh, see if we have anybody that's going to be able to open up some extra minutes for, you know, some of these backups and the mid tier man, kind of like Corey said, uh, feels like it's got a little more tournament upside. It's a little scary uh, posting, you know, some of these guys uh, under 5K in your lineup and, and sticking with it. So kind of scary there. But, uh, yeah, hey, only four games this time over 150. You got seven games with a spread of seven or more. Um, I don't know that it's going to take more than 260 to uh, to win this thing. Um, I know, you know, we've, we've seen some increases in points scored, obviously, so – We'll see, man. Like this is a just kind of a weird slate, man. And we're gonna talk through some of the showcase games and kind of go over what we think uh, what we think we need to do in order to make this thing work. It wasn't too long ago that we were talking about needing like three twenty to win, uh, you know, to to win a slate. And like now, you know, for two sixty, just around the corner from that slate that we had the other day, like big time difference in in how you can approach this thing. And uh, yeah. We're going to go ahead and hit that right now. So make sure you hit uh, that live chat. Uh, we we'll see you, Cam, in there. Uh, we're going to drop your core four in there, it looks like. Yeah, of course. Do, do what you got to do, man. Hop in there. Um, but, yeah, let's get to this 12-game slate. We've got a 2K to first, right, Eric? You were saying earlier, eh, it's not. That's right. Nothing there. But we do have one big one there, the 2K to first. And then we also have a king of the bracket seat available as – well, 
totals aren't, aren't just just aren't a lot to uh, be uh, you know not to take a lot to write home about I guess. But uh, we are going to showcase some games. If this is your first time watching, if you've hit the poll and you said it's your first time, we'd like to hit some showcase games here right away. So let's showcase a 160-point uh, total game in St. John's and Creighton. The, the old Johnny's playing well right now, but our eight-point underdogs on the road there at Creighton. 79-point implied total for the Blue Jays. When we look at the metrics here, St. John's 30th offensive efficiency, 62nd defensive efficiency, 74th in tempo, 121st in bench minutes used. And then you have Creighton, of course, 15th offensive efficiency, 16th defensive efficiency, 260th in tempo, a little bit more deliberate with what they like to do, and 341st in bench minutes used. A super tight rotation there for Creighton. But, Mike, St. John's isn't too much bigger um, they, they do use a few more guys, maybe more often, but, um, you know, Soriano is, is the lone holdover obviously from years past and, and is playing well, but, um, are you playing them at 8k on this slate? Absolutely. Um, <laughs> in tournaments only because it's, it's like, it kind of reminds me of Baycott last year in a way where it's like all these guys, all these guards around them that we love to play are just taking all the shots. So he doesn't have a chance to kind of go out and have these monster games. Um, you know, Luis is taking a bunch of shots. You know, Dennis Jenkins is shooting it all day. Um, Jenkins coming up with a 25%, a 26% shot rate. Like, sorry, shot rate's only 21% this year, which is kind of frustrating. So now that his price is starting to come down, you know, we we're in the 9Ks. Now we're down at 8K flat. We know he has 40 fantasy point upside. He's either got to make all of his attempts that he gets because he's not getting a, a lot of them, or if he finally has that one breakout game where he's able to put up, you know, 15 attempts, 16 attempts, uh, you know, it feels like he'll, he'll really be able to bust wide open a slate. So um, definitely in the tournament player pool for me, it's, it is a tough matchup. I mean, Creighton 16th in defensive efficiency adjusted. Obviously, uh, Kalkbrenner's on the other side, so uh, a little scary, which makes him a tournament-only option. Uh, Dennis Jenkins, as long as he's going to kind of be at this, you know, low to mid-7K price, he's going to be playable on every slate. So, I mean, you look at it here, he hasn't been under 34 fantasy points in the last four games. I mean, just incredible rates across the board. Um just so many ways to get there uh, at 7,500 though. You gotta, you gotta, you gotta figure like if he's really going to get there, you want this game to play a little bit tighter than what they're projecting on Ken Palm. You, you know, you probably want a, a two possession game here, uh, you know, just to make sure that, uh, you know, you, you maximize the uh, opportunity there with him. It's kind of tough to stack him and Soriano together. Uh, it's something that we kind of did with Soriano and some of the other guys from last year, but, it doesn't feel like it. it feels like I'm either just playing Soriano as a one-off or I'm stacking these other guards together. Um, that's just kind of the way it's been playing out this year. Uh, Ledlum, he's there, obviously, you know, he's my boy. He is at uh, 6,500. A uh, little bit of a disappointment. Obviously he had the injury. He wasn't going to play. They did play. So we're kind of at the monitor that situation. I haven't really seen anything that suggests that he's, at least not good to go. So, you know, he's a guy kind of like Jenkins um, can get stats across the board and that's what you like at 6,500. So he's in the tournament player pool. Um, I don't know that I'm going to be using him. So man, this St. John's team, like it's kind of rough because you're going to Creighton. It's a tough environment. 71 implied total isn't, I mean, it's not, it doesn't feel great to spend 8,000 or 7,500 against uh, or for Soriano or Jenkins. So I, I may just be using these guys as, as one-off pieces. Uh, definitely Soriano, definitely Jenkins in tournaments. I don't know that I can get to Ledlam. And then, man, I, I don't know. Like these other guys, it just seems like there's a bunch of other dudes, and I'm just not as interested, Eric. What, uh, what say you on some of these other guys on uh, St. John's roster? Yeah, in, in this in this game environment against a tough defense, right? Like it it does feel kind of gross to pay all the way up, but there there are some you know mid slash low tier options that I I think we can at least you know highlight. Right, you can start with R.J. Lewis, six point two K. I mean he's he's been so solid over these last four games, right? So like you know for me, he's probably a bit more of a of a cash game kind of play. Um, the the upside just you know really isn't there. His his rates look 
looked fine across the board. He, you know, he, he rebounds well for a guard, but I mean, he's, he's not, he's not, he's not getting to that, that kind of ceiling point that we need to really, you know, consider him on a big 12 game slate. So you're playing single entries like our guy, Corey, um, you know, you're, you're, you're trying to take down a small tournament. I, I think you can, you know, you can put Lewis in the player pool, but you know, gotta, 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 gotta reach for the stars when you're talking about tournaments. Uh, beyond that, I mean, you got you got Brady Dunlap, right? Like he's a way to save a little bit of money, four point two k. I mean, there's there, there's not much surefire value on this slate, so you know, with that in mind, Dunlap could be a way to save a little bit of money. I mean, he can he can get you you know four x. You know, if if he does, you can just move on with your lineup. Um, he's he's also an interesting stacking partner. You know, if if you're trying to you know build around this St. John side. He's a way to get a little bit different and to get a little bit of salary relief off of some of those expensive guys. But yeah, kind of like you said, Mike, like nothing, nothing's really screaming at me for the, uh, for the, for the red storm here. But can you, I mean, can you play Dunlap on his own, Mike? I mean, are you okay with that? Just using him as a one-off here uh, just to get into this game? Um, or man, it's tough, play? man. Like, I mean, he's, I like him, like, kind of what Eric said, like, more as a uh, stacking partner with one of the top dogs because um, he's super shot dependent. So, you know, he's going to have to get open looks from, you know, someone like Dennis Jenkins or, you know, even Soriano has a 10% assist rate kicking it out from the post. Uh, yeah, I don't know, man. Like, that's tough playing him as a one-off because he's <laughs> – he could just go out and get you 12 fantasy points and – there goes your, you know, there goes your punt for the day, essentially, because he's not a he's not a high 15 percent usage rate. I mean, it's just not everything has to go right for him. And when it does go right, he needs a bunch of, uh, you know, ways to, uh, you know, get there from other people. So, yeah, yeah, Jay, I mean, it's a good question. I just I don't see it, man. It's tough. Well, and again, that, these are the sort of things when you know that there's not a ton of surefire value like. Eric was saying, like, it's worth an ask in that situation. Like, can I just play this guy on his own at, at 4.2? Because, yeah, I mean, you, if you got – if he goes 4X, you're – you know, which is kind of about what you would expect out of him. I, but you're not – you're looking for bigger than that, right? You're looking for a bigger splash. We're not, are we trying to win $10 or are we trying to win 10 k Are we trying to win $2 or are we trying to win 2 k I guess is what it actually is for Saturday. But, yeah, so uh, might not be the best on his own. Good stuff there. All right, let's move on to Creighton here. And going to start with Mike on this one. Even title rotation, like I said, <laughs> uh, St. John's was playing the eight or nine maybe. And, and Creighton, it really just feels like it's six guys <laughs> run out there, don't foul out, and, uh, make it happen. So uh, what do you think yeah. about my – I mean, it, Baylor Shireman is, you know – He's one of he's one of the best players to watch in, in college basketball. But nine point one here, yeah. um, you know, he'd, he'd really have to go nuclear. Uh, in yeah, game. that's a that's a that's a crazy price point. That just tells you how well he's been playing, how consistent he's been playing. So on this slate, ninety one hundred for Baylor Shireman. Oh boy. Um. If you told tell me where the value is, and I will play. I want to ask Cam, Mama Rocks, Brock, like, um, who do you guys like as value? Because like, there's 18 guys that you, over AK, so you have to figure out a way to get to uh, hopefully one or two of these guys, or you can just live in the mid tier. But these guys have so much upside over 8K, even even at 7500 and over. I mean, we're gonna talk about some guys that are you know that, that are a little underpriced. That's you know 7600 in particular, Wade Taylor. It is so tough to find out how to get to these guys. So for Baylor Shireman at ninety one hundred, man, like that is a that's a tough deal. Um, even Trey Alexander now getting the bump, even though he wasn't great uh, last time out, but obviously had the thirty seven and the forty one before that. I mean, you're getting both of these guys. We talk about it every every uh, every show. I mean, they just do everything: high usage, high shot rate. You know, they rebound the basketball. They're you know they create. Um, both in the 20% assist rate, you know, Shireman shooting a little bit better from three, he's taking 135 attempts. So, you know, it feels like for a team that's almost implied 80 points that I want to get to one of these guys and just play it like a 50, 50, 
but I don't know that I can play this at 50 51 because there's so many other guys um, in this price range. And two, because how do I get to him? Like, tell me how, like, I think how I get to him is if, if I play Brady Dunlap and, and Danish Jenkins, you know, I could slide Baylor Shireman and just hope that the game goes over. Um, I mean, I guess that's one way to do it, but then you're, you know, you're really hoping Brady Dunlap goes at least four X uh, to make that work. So Really tough, man. Steven Ashworth, I mean, I've been just just completely burnt by him all year. Um, I mean, he was, he was okay when, kind of when he was in the uh, like the low fives or the high fours. Yeah. Um, but now that he's back into the mid fives, it, I mean, it doesn't feel great. So, like this Creighton team, it's they only play a few guys. I don't know how to get to either one of them, like. I know Kalkbrenner's in that same situation, Eric. Like, is there a way you can play Kalkbrenner? I mean, it may be a little bit easier because he's a forward and you'd like to pay up for forwards. But, I mean, what are your thoughts on this straight inside and Kalkbrenner? Yeah, being being a forward helps, right? You know, being on the, the pace up side of this matchup helps. But, you know, I mean, realistically, like, this is going to be a complete battle with him and Soriano, right? So, like, you know, he, he played – Played against him two times last year. You know, one of one of them was a was a pretty big blowout. He had three and four blocks in in those games, which you know that I mean that'll put him on the radar, right? Um, he's you know he's he's playing well enough to this point in the season where I, I think you you kind of have to consider him in the in the tournament pool. But I mean, I, I don't know if I would go much further than that, right? I, I don't think I'm looking at him in single entry because look, Soriano has been putting the clamps on people all season, right? So. To you know, to drop eight point two k on someone that's in that tough matchup, you know, it, it's it's not without its risk, but the the upside's there. So I'll I'll look at it in terms of tournaments, but that's that's really about it. I like Jay's idea of the two one stack was like that. Like I feel like that's the only way like, you can get multiple pieces in a game environment. I think Mom Rock says, yeah, it's a tough game to get to, but you have to have one of the two Creighton pieces, preferably at guard. I mean, yeah. So like you could see a Shireman with. Uh, you know, a Dunlap and just hope he gets to 18 uh, and then play him with the Danish Jenkins. So that's one way to get into it. Otherwise, it's kind of like maybe one off one player in this game and then kind of just move on and hope you pick the right guy. <laughs> Corey knows which guy it is. It's Trey yeah. Day. Uh, Let's <laughs> ride. Trey right, Day, right when you talked me back onto him, my guy went, went right <laughs> back to the middle. <laughs> Trey Day. I don't mind that. Uh, but Cog Renner with the with the the block shots, the the counting stats, being able to put that up. I mean, it has got to be on on the radar there for for Creighton. But yeah, thanks for everybody for hopping in that live chat. We appreciate that. Good to see everybody there as always. Uh, make sure you get into that poll if you haven't. The poll asking you how long have you been watching One and Done? Is this your first show? Been around a month. Have you been around for this season? Or were you like day one, way back in the way back, you know, like back in the day? Uh, <laughs> so before the graphics. Updating and... that poll. <laughs> we're uh we're we're ten votes deep. A lot of day ones, not surprising. A lot of familiar faces rocking with us tonight. Love that. Absolutely love that. Good stuff. Keep that going. Make sure you keep that live chat going as well as we move on now to our next showcase game, which is Kentucky. On the road to, yeah, College Station. I guess they do have something. I mean, <laughs> the armpit of the of the Southwest, College Station, Texas. Anyway, it is beautiful Kentucky. this time of year. Yeah, oh, oh, yeah, sure it is. <laughs> Kentucky one point favorites on the road at College Station. There, um, seventy nine to seventy eight. The implied totals. Some very efficient teams here, and Kentucky likes to get up and down as opposed to a and is a little bit more, uh, you know, uh, what's the word I'm looking <laughs> for here? Uh, Slow. Uh, in tempo. But both of them uh, very efficient uh, offensively and defensively. This is going to be a hell of a matchup as indicated by the one-point uh, spread here. So, um, Mike, I'm going to go right back to you here with uh, for the Wildcats of Kentucky – um, and this is, you know, 247th in bench minutes, a, a pretty hard seven man rotation. So, um, yeah, it's, I, I guess, you know, you saw Trey your boy Mitchell, Trey Mitchell at 8,400. Hey, you know, well, 
I liked him better at his last price, and the, and he definitely yeah. paid that off. Uh, we we were really high on Trey Mitchell the last time out, yep. and and he and he paid that off. Eighty four hundred. So at this <laughs> point, Mike. Um, Eighty four hundred yeah. on the road. <laughs> I don't want to pay. I don't also want to pay for last last slate he was on. I want to pay for just this one. So. Yeah, that uh, that algorithm got a hold of that forty eight and forty seven burger and said, you know what, that's, those couple of thirties and that uh, that little guy that seventeen from five games ago, uh, wouldn't worry about that. I one. guess wouldn't worry about that one. But I am worried um, for a guy that has a sixteen percent shot rate that needs to do a ton for this team. Otherwise, that uh, that is a steep price. Um, you guys know how I feel about shot rates and <laughs> that price tag. That um, I was already on the fringe, and uh, yeah, this puts me in the rough. So uh, probably going to skip on some Trey Mitchell here. I thought Reed Shepard would get uh, more of a more of a price decrease, right, Jay? I mean, well, the the, the output that was disappointing anyway, but yeah, I, I definitely thought that it would it would be at least closer I, to seven K here. I thought we were getting for like sixty eight, and maybe even sixty six, yeah. and we'd just be understandable, be and be you know an interesting play at least at that point. Um, but I, he's just not. He's just not in the player pool for me. Um, I'm more inclined to use my boy who went off last game, uh, Dillingham, put up a 33 in that spot. We we told you guys to use him in tournaments. Anytime you have a 30% usage rate, nearly a 30% shot rate with a 30% assist rate, and he shoots a bunch of threes and has a high steal rate, like he's going to have these crazy like 30. And he does this in like 24 minutes. So like – it's insane how he does this. I mean, the last game he didn't even, you know, he didn't even. He got 19 minutes. He, it's just crazy. Like if he ever gets a hold of a 30 minute game, <laughs> he's gonna just absolutely destroy but, the slate. But, but that's the downside, right? Yeah. You don't know is he gonna make the most of those 24 minutes, and when he doesn't, that's just that can yeah. cost you big time. Oh know? yeah. So it's definitely risk reward. Tournaments only. I'll play him in a few tournaments. Um, just because he's got that massive, massive ceiling, you never know. You know, one of these other guards, Shepard, Wagner, you know, one of these guys gets Reeves, gets into foul trouble. Maybe we can get him up into the, you know, the high 20s, um, that Kansas game where he went completely bonkers. Um, he's a top 10 draft pick. So can we uh, can we get this kid a, a little more run for the price tag? Is that <laughs> kind of my question? So, but you're paying for it. You're paying seventy two hundred. It feels like he's maybe five hundred dollars overpriced uh, based on the minutes, right? You're, can you imagine it's been you know clicking the guys? Now? That's why nobody does it. You click seventy two hundred, and you're like, all right, I've got to get thirty five fantasy points in nineteen minutes, <laughs> like. <laughs> The second he comes in the game, you better get like six fantasy points immediately. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And, and hit a three. Yeah. If he misses like, his first uh, three and turns it over, then uh, you're in for a <laughs> long night. All right. So, uh, DJ Wagner, pretty interesting to me at 6,400. Like, he's getting minutes. Um, the usage rate's still good. Like, he's not putting up these monster games, um, but he's giving you a floor of basically 20 fantasy points. So, uh, another very talented player. Uh, you know, man, it's kind of crazy. This is why this slate is weird. The first two games that we were talking about, it is really hard to make a case to play some of these guys or multiple guys together or even really just one of the guys because all these Kentucky guards, guys, I mean, like, Eric, it's it's rough out here whenever you select one of these guys because you don't know. It's it's like Jay's favorite game, spin the wheel, Eric. So are you going to spin the wheel? And is Antonio Reeves on your uh, on your wheel here? <laughs> Yeah, the only the only name we haven't mentioned here, the elder statesman of these Kentucky Wildcats. I mean, look, like the 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 price is just kind of like in this like weird kind of middle zone. You know, on on the team, like he's such a stabilizing force on this this roster full of rookies. Um, you know, the the rates that you can speak to are you know are are perfectly solid. Twenty two percent usage, twenty six percent shot. The the kid is just completely money from long range. 42% from three on 86 attempts, but he's very shot dependent, right? So like, you know, he's, he's gotten you, you know, a couple of forties here in his recent game log. You obviously love that upside at a seven K flat price tag, but the, the nights where it's not going in, like, you know, he's, he's going to have a hard time paying off, you know, seven K and in this particular spot, like tough defense on the road, like they're, there are a lot of things that, you know, can can go wrong for him. So, 
you know, m- maybe I'll, you know, I'll, I'll sprinkle them in here, but I mean, this, you know, this team has so much talent, like one guy gets the hot hand and they just start chucking. And all of a sudden, you know, some of those shots that might've gone Reeves way are now distributed elsewhere in the team. It's just, I, I feel like he's, he's got more duds than out. So you can sprinkle them in if, you know, you're trying to find a different way to get into this game, but not a, not a huge priority for me with Reeves. And that's the difference here in a game like when it all set up for Trey Mitchell to be one of the best plays on the slate, and we knew it. It was like almost like insta play. Every game's obviously not like that, and we're not paying eight point four for Trey Mitchell. I can't, you know, seven point two for Dillingham. I love that guy, but I don't. I can't do it. And then you've got Reeves that is so dependent because if 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 Mitchell actually takes a few more shots than normal, <laughs> and then Wagner, you know, Wagner, you know, hits a few threes and gets hot. He doesn't get any shots. <laughs> Nine like, last game, right? Like, <laughs> yeah. So uh, it's it's tough, but uh, all those guys are so talented, Eric. Like you said, I mean, but it, it, I think you just again, it's, this is literally you're you're spinning the wheel and and playing one of these guys. Who goes off tonight? Who's it going to be? If you're feeling Dillingham, I don't blame you. But again, you're you're needing him to get to that thirty-seven, thirty-eight mark. Are you comfortable paying seven point two for that? Maybe so. We'll see. Let's move over to the Aggies. I will know. I will not. No more Aggie bashing or College Station bashing. At least, <laughs> at least right now in this very moment. But uh, going to go right back to Eric here. Uh, another. We talked at the top of the show about how it was just all these rotations <laughs> tightening up, and A and M is plays seven, maybe eight. Eric. Yeah, they they do, and because of that, the the guys that we want to target here feel like they're they're pretty clear. I'll start with Wade Taylor, our cover boy for tonight. Seven point six k. I mean, this is a huge spot for the Aggies against a top five team. His his rates are absolutely massive, and this this price is fantastic. Like this is really everything that you're that you're looking for out here. Like I I don't know how you do anything but just completely lock him. In terms of your your cash games exposure, it, even in tournaments, he's he's going to be plenty popular, right? So, I mean, they're they're just there. There's so many ways that this guy gets there at at that price tag. A lot to like about how he's going to make a three at some point, up. right, Eric? <laughs> I mean, he's taken 114 of them, right? Like, <laughs> it's not like he's taking one a game, right? He's just he's out. He's he's doing the Caleb Love thing where he just sprays him every time he gets the ball in his hand. But none of them go in twenty five percent from downtown. So at some point, like you said, you know maybe that creeps up to thirty. And if if that if that uh if that turnaround happens in in a single game or a couple of games, it's going to be a few big nights for Wade Taylor. Uh, on the other side, I mean, if if you want to if you want to pivot off of him, you want to save a little bit of money, you can go to Tyrese Radford, five point seven k. I mean, look, he's he's got he's got the minutes you're looking for. He's got the usage you're looking for. You know, for for me, I feel like his recent price increase. You know, he was kind of floating around sub five k there for a while. Like, you know, this is something that's probably going to draw people away from him in in tournaments. So, you know, you can get a little bit different by by rostering him, and you're you're definitely sopping up a ton of leverage off of what we presume to be Wade Taylor chalk, right? So. Those are the, the two ones that I think we should really call out here by name, but that's that's just me, Mike. Any uh, <laughs> anyone else here on uh, on the Aggies that you think we need to spend a little time on? Yeah, I think we do. And I mean, so here, here's how I look at it: like we okay, so the last slate we had Kentucky and Missouri, right? Um, mm-hmm. You know, we none of the Kentucky guys really ex- got over four X, right? Except for Trey Mitchell, who we smashed and, and won on that. So I don't know if. Any of the Kentucky guys, I mean, might, one of them might get to four and a half, five X, but the other side is kind of where you want to be. I mean, Noah Carter had a good game for Missouri. Uh, Tamar Bates had a good game. I think Nick Honor actually ended up on the uh, on the winning team somehow because the uh, optimal, yeah. yeah, the optimal because who was it that was like dirt cheap at Xavier Johnson or something and scored like ten yeah. fantasy points and. He, and Nick Honor had 16, so of course that six points vaulted that person way above 70 percent of the field or whatever it was. Um, and yeah, so we so I love me some Wade Taylor. I love Radford. You can put them together. Um, you can use Radford off the Taylor uh, play as leverage. Henry Coleman has to be in your player pool. 
I mean, he's 6,300. Look, it's not exciting. You can't play him in cash. Um, you have to maybe take a shot as a stacking partner with Way Taylor or Tyrese Radford. Uh, but he's at the uh, forward position for 6,300. We know he has 40 fantasy point upside. I don't mind. I The only the thing is that he has to double-double, and he doesn't take a lot of shots. Like, we got that 17% shot rate, so he's going to have to make the most of his opportunities, and he's going to have to gobble up the boards. And now that Kentucky has a couple of seven-footers in there, it's going to be a little bit tougher. But this is, this is a game A&M needs desperately. They need their three big guys, Taylor Coleman and Radford, if they're going to win this game, like it feels like two of these guys have to go off. So that's why I like it, you know, some some two one sacks or even two oh from the Aggie side. We look at some of these other guys. Uh, you know, Anderson Garcia, he's 6,200. Like he's been he's been playing a ton of minutes, but I just don't think we can go there here with the newest price increase. Like it feels like now you're paying for you know the the third, you know, the the 30, right? And that's it, everything kind of has to go right with him as well. I'd much rather spin down to like someone like Hayden Hafner. Um, I mean, there's a way to save some coin, right? He's 3,900. The guy takes a bunch of three pointers. Like he's out there for 20 to 25 minutes. I mean, in this environment where Kentucky's going to be running up and down the floor, Jay, like, you know, we watch it every time. Teams, you cannot slow down Kentucky. Uh, therefore, it feels like Hayden Hafner's probably going to take eight or nine three-pointers uh, yeah. just because they're going to try to focus in on stopping Wade Taylor driving and Coleman in the paint. So I don't know. Like I, I wish he was three, three, four hundred bucks cheaper Play him at that 3.5 where every three is one X, but you know, he's a guy that starts and I mean, you have to take some shots somewhere. And I mean, he's a guy that's, you know, taking five, six, seven, eight threes in the last four games. So give me eight more threes, Jay. What do you think? Yeah. And a big time pace up spot like this, Hefner is the type of player at, you know, at under 4k that if you pay up, if you, if you stack some of these higher total games and you have to spend up to get the players that you want, um, Hefner is the type of player at 3.9 that you're going to have to probably fit in and hope that he goes off. You know, I like the play. If you're just looking at the end and you, you overspent and you, you just overshot by a little bit. And what you thought, okay, I think Hefner is a decent option to fall back on, especially in a tournament because, if he shoots nine threes, he makes <laughs> six of them. It's not it's not out of the realm of possibility. Yeah, it's not, it's not out of the realm. It's not out of the realm of possibility. Is it probable? No. Okay, <laughs> but is it possible? But if he hits three of them, Jay, and he plays 25 minutes and he hands out a couple right. of assists and trips over a steal. Exactly. Then you're in business. So, like we uh, said, Nick Connor got are you, 16 are you, are you reading off his, was on the optimal. You're reading off his box score against Houston Baptist, oh, yeah. right? <laughs> Played 25 minutes. He took eight <laughs> shot. Took eight threes. He hit three of them. He got a steal. 28 points. Right, like exactly what yeah, you're looking for. <laughs> that'll do it. <laughs> if he does that, we're all we're all yeah, rich. Welcome right there. Yeah, we're all we're all uh, really. So that, it's not go. Houston Baptist. Uh, <laughs> so. um, no, it is not. But worth a shot. Worth a look there. Even out in College Station. All right. <laughs> I know Cam had a core four. Did we get to that? Yeah, uh, that Cam's good. core Cam four. Uh, four no, in the uh, it uh, it had it had Radford in it, right? Of course yeah, it did. Cam liking Radford. I think Mama Rocks likes Radford also. I like Judah Mintz here. Uh, interesting play for his price. We're not going to talk about him tonight because that, I mean that could, that game could get out of hand quickly. But I don't mind him for tournaments. Uh, Cam, old Reeves there for you and Bidiaco. Man, you must be playing the. Uh, you must be playing the fifteen dollar tomorrow, my friend. Uh, <laughs> trying to hit the jugular with those Let's guys. Let's go. <laughs> Swinging Love for it. the fences. Love seeing it in the chat always, Cam. Thanks for for dropping that in, Mama Rocks. Love that group, Cam. Have a ton of rapper. Yeah. Cosine. Yeah. Don't, don't blame you. Don't blame you one bit. At oh, make sure you hop in that live chat. Hit those like and subscribe buttons for your bro season basketball if you haven't already. If this is your first time. And you put it in the poll that's up there, nice and live for you. If this is your first time, drop something in the live chat. Let us know. And if you like what you're hearing, hit that subscribe button. Smash that like button. Like, you know, put the little boop, boop, right there. Just smash one time. That's all you have to do. Hit that button and tell the broskies and broskets in basketball about your boys over here at yeah, one. boys. And – Done. We got a we got some preliminary results here of the poll. 
we yeah. got? Let me see. Let me see. Yeah, we do. Ear. We've uh, these we these got? numbers have been have been swinging. Twenty five percent of people are saying this is their first time. Welcome in. Yeah, love to see y'all here. Then we've got a we've got a good chunk here. Seventeen percent about a month. Twenty five percent just been rocking with us this season, and the remaining thirty three percent been rocking since day one. Day one ish. Since day one ish. All right, <laughs> here we go. Thank y'all for doing that. Thanks for hopping in there. And we are going to get to two more showcase games here. Run through these. We got Seton Hall traveling to Butler Ooh, on the road. Butler. 48 point implied total there. Butler 76 to 71, I believe, somewhere around that point. Um, some decent totals there to look at. Seton Hall 62nd offensive efficiency, 92nd. Defensive efficiency, 283rd in tempo, a little more deliberate there, and 337th uh, with their bench minutes. So they ain't playing, I mean, <laughs> nobody. Uh, neither nobody, one. <laughs> neither one of these teams, nobody. right? <laughs> Who can play nobody now? It's the nobody Seton game. <laughs> the play guys on this one, not, not – yeah. The, yeah, all right. Yeah, yeah, we got it. We got it. All right. Um, Butler, 47th offensive, 84th defensive, 151st in tempo. You can't get me on Keith Sweat in the middle of the show and then expect me to just, you know. Absolutely. 292nd in bench minutes. All right, Seton. Seton Hall here for Mike starting there. Again, like you said, they're not playing. They're playing six, seven guys max. <laughs> um, and you talked about uh, Garcia paying for his past performances on A and M, like Kadarius, yeah, now, it's to catch up to him a little bit as well. I uh, I think that Georgetown game, we uh, we nailed that uh, <laughs> mm -hmm. that pick there. Um, Ninety three hundred now for Kadari Richmond on the road. You still love the rates outside of the three point percentage, but I mean. Another question of how you get to him, and the question of if you got to him, why would you not spend two hundred dollars down for Shireman, or spend what is it eight hundred dollars down to to Trey Alexander in better game environments at home? That creates leverage, though, right? So if you can figure out a way to get to him, maybe use a you know Hefner, and and then all of a sudden you know you got some coin, but and that's a lofty pay up for him. So tough to pay for him all the way up there. Um, Especially in this spot, uh, neither team playing in the, inside the top 150 in tempo, so also kind of scary there. Trey Davis, um, kind of priced where he should be, basically. I mean, he's he just kind of does what he does. Um, he's there. He's on the court. Um, you know, the, the offense absolutely goes through Kadari Richmond. So if I'm playing anybody, like I, I feel like I would play Richmond from this side. Um, Eric, like Adai Wusu is somewhat interesting. Alamir Daw is somewhat interesting, but everybody on this team is getting that price hike from the Georgetown game and Bidiaco. I don't know. I just at 25 minutes, it's just it's just tough to get to him. Um, and he's not not out there for more than 25 minutes, man. So I'm having a hard time with the Seton Hall side. I, I really like the Butler side more, man. Eric, what's your thoughts on this? Man, this is a perfect case study in how DraftKings is just chapping our ass all season long. Whenever they whenever they raise someone's <laughs> price, it is a huge jump. Five, seven, a thousand dollars. When they drop someone's price, it's like two hundred bucks. And because of that Georgetown matchup, the Seton Hall side is on the absolute wrong side of those price hawks. Dylan Adiawusu is six point seven K, which is just like scary to say out loud in the year of our Lord twenty twenty four. Um, that price is probably going to have people looking somewhere else. So he won't be popular if you want to sprinkle him into tournaments, right? Like every now and again, he'll, you know, he'll pop up and, and splash one of these big games, right? Uh, 32 or 35, he's got a 39 in his game logs. Like, but these are kind of few and far between, right? So like, you know, for me, I'm probably only looking at him where I'm, you know, trying to stack him up with Richmond or if I'm just looking to get, you know, exponentially weird in in a tournament um you know Almir Dawes sitting right there with him another 6.7k player I mean look he he went off for 70 points combined in the last two games so you know his his price increase is justified but 
another guy that's just super shot dependent, right? 24% shot rate. He's taking 106 threes on the season. And, you know, the games where he's making them, you know, he'll he'll give you that 38 or that 32 like he has in the last couple of games. The games where he's not, I mean, he's got 13s and 19s and 15s out there, right? Like, you know, it's just – it's it's real uncomfortable to play a guy that needs to hit so many shots to pay off his number. You know, I, I just, I can't really feel good about prioritizing, I guess of the two, you get a little bit more consistency with, with Dylan Adayawusu, right? It's mm-hmm. just, you, you don't see the ceiling quite as much, but you know, neither of these guys are are really going to be, you know, major priorities for me. Yeah. And you got to think that going on the road, there's going to be a little bit of regression on the three point shooting, right? Like, so I, I don't know. Typically, if you can, yeah. Yeah, you can bet on that. Um, But I know we do like the Butler side a little bit more than the Seton Hall side. Eric, I'm going to come right back to you now. Um, A little bit more open of a rotation. Sometimes they get to nine guys here that play eight or nine minutes. Um, But the pricing here is the most um, attractive thing. Like, we like some of these names, like, We've been talking about Posh Alexander since I can remember being on one and done. <laughs> but, but um, you know, everything about this is like it's it's almost like salivating is the word I want to use with with how many different ways you can get into this game on the Butler side of the ball. It screams mid. Man. That's what he wants to say. <laughs> Dude, him, him and Corey, just the mid kings over here. Look on our on our production sheet under Posh Alexander's name. The first note that I wrote is this guy is my dog and I love him. Posh <laughs> Alexander is one of he's, he's he's one of our rider dies. But also, I mean, Posh Alexander under seven k. Like let's let's go. This guy's got so many outs. Like he's got enough upside for a tournament. Right. He's got some high thirties outcomes in his game logs. He's steady enough for cash. Right. Like. There, there is, there are so many reasons to like this, this setup for Posh Alexander. Love how this, this one is, is in line for him. And then after that, I mean, the, the pricing is interesting on a lot of these Butler guys. But I, I don't know, Mike. Is there one that you, you kind of make a, a stronger case for out of the remaining guys in this rotation? Yeah, I mean, I get like the love for Posh, right? Like he's kind of the guy that sticks out, um, even though he's, dog. you know the most expensive of these guys, but you look at the pricing and it puts them in play for tournaments for sure, especially stacking yeah. with Posh. Because Posh can get a lot done on the defensive end and he can also get a lot done um, assisting. And in general, I mean... percent assist rate. Yeah, I mean, he just gets it done in different ways to where you can go out and get a shot-dependent guy like DJ Davis. Now, we got to be careful with DJ Davis's minutes. Um, kind of came down last game but he's a guy that can flash 35 fantasy point upside, you know, super shot dependent takes a ton of threes. I mean, he can really knock him down. Uh, He just transferred from UC Irvine. You got Pierre Brooks who, you know, this guy has a 24% shot rate. Uh, You know, every now and then he'll he'll reach back and and get you some boards, uh, but also another good three point shooter, 41% from three on 96 attempts. So that guard forward eligibility, you can kind of move him around your lineup Jamel Telfort at 6,400. This is a guy that we were paying 75, 7,800 a couple of weeks ago. Kind of falling off a cliff, but I feel like for tournaments, this is a place to jump right back on. I mean, he they're in need of a good road win. This guy plays a ton of minutes. He has a high usage rate of uh, 22% and a 24% shot rate. He's going to hand out some assists, and he'll grab some boards every now and then. Uh, so, yeah, I, I've – have a lot of interest in kind of like that mid-tier build with Jamel Telfort with um, a st- as a stacking partner to Posh Alexander. Jalen Thomas, I mean, he has to at least be in the player pool now. I mean, he flashed uh, last game, had that had that out of nowhere uh, <laughs> 32 ceiling game. Um, you know, last year when he was uh, you know kind of filling in uh, for Manny Bates, we would uh, essentially go – uh, to him at 3,900, 4K, he would flash 28, you know, sometimes 30 fantasy point upside, almost a lock whenever, you know, Manny Bates was out and he was cheap. And there it is. I mean, he had 10 points, 14 rebounds. Now, guess who it was against? And we should have been on this last time, Marquette, but he just wasn't playing a lot of minutes. Boy. So, you know, probably not going to have that same boost. You know, game log watchers at 5,400. 
you got to be very, very careful. I would probably pay the thousand dollars more if you can if you can get there to get the you know the shot rate, the creation from Telford, the minutes that Telford gets, uh, the three point shooting that Telford gives you. But you know Thomas is a guy that could reach back and get you another you know a, a ten a ten and ten game at fifty four hundred. I mean that's basically twenty five fantasy points. So. I'm going to look at that a little bit, but I'm not going to go crazy with it. So, you know, he's their starting center. Andre Screen was getting some time off the bench. I'm going to be crushing him next year uh, when we get him to start the year 4,600. Uh, really nice looking player. And you got some other guys in here. Uh, you know, Landon Moore's been playing some minutes, so he's kind of in the player pool at 4,500. Uh, back to back games, uh, you know, got 20 and 24 minutes. So, that's kind of where the DJ Davis minutes went. So you got to kind of be careful with those two. But yeah, I mean, guys, like there's some, there's some plays on this side, like Posh being one. Uh, I really like Telford. Pierre Brooks in a large field. Uh, you know, you play in the dollar joint. I don't mind throwing some Pierre Brooks in there, get you a 30, 35 piece in there. Just a bunch of different ways. People are going to forget about DJ Davis and you have Jalen Thomas, Jay. So yeah, I mean, a lot to like for tournaments. Like, none of these guys outside of Posh are even remotely safe for <laughs> for cash games. Or cash, yeah. So, yeah, so. Well, you like the implied total. Are you living in the mid-tier with me or not? Like, yeah. you're on these guys and then you're not. Are you mid or not? Because, I mean, for me, for me, it feels a lot. It feels mid. Are you mid? <laughs> are you mid? Uh, no, yeah. I'll say I'm it. Mid. I'm mid. You can't be half mid. <laughs> You got to be in, or you got to be out. Yeah, yeah. It's like being pregnant. You're either mid or you're not. Okay. And I'm mid. Just so you know. And uh, before we get off this game, Mama Rock's jumping in the comments. Uh, Musu and Alamir. Too high for a road game, I'm afraid. Yeah. Yes. You are, as usual, Dude. spot on there. They did um, Seaton so dirty with these price adjustments. They did, <laughs> They're yeah. almost out of the pool entirely. It's wild. Like, how do you even – you can't. Game like, stacking can't. this game is so sneaky. <laughs> like, well, and again, if, if you look at it so from that sneaky. perspective, because you know they're only playing seven guys. I mean, max. you know who's on the court. The game goes so overtime, you know Jay. going to be playing if this hits over and you found <laughs> a way – You found a way to get <laughs> Richmond and one of the – I mean, get crazy with it. Get your 2K and then let us know about it. Uh, we would love to. We would love it. You know, maybe I'll do it. Maybe I'll win 2K. Who knows? I believe in you. Who knows? I believe in, I believe in that. I believe that and believe in the shield. Hey, you know, like, hey, Rocky's coming back. It's a good time to be a wrestling fan. The Rock is back, y'all. Y'all saw it. It's a good time. So, uh, anyways, let's head to San Diego State Aztecs and New Mexico. Yeah, go. 150, one point implied total there. San Diego State, 76. New Mexico, 75. New Mexico playing um, very fast, 17th in tempo, and San Diego State getting the pace up here. But very efficient teams. Both of them are on each side of the ball. New Mexico, however, 41st in total bench minutes. And uh, San Diego State, uh, 248. So, um Let's start with let's start with San Diego State here, Mike. Um, you know, the D again, nine K, like, and then there's this huge drop off. <laughs> I mean, it's, uh, it's just like a cliff. Yeah, like legitimately. Yeah, like a legitimate. It's a cliff, uh, and and I think Brock may may uh may I mean he may be onto something here. Especially Ooh, for the flag plan. What's up, Brock? Yeah, I love that. Say dude. Love that. 9K, Jaden Ladee. Tell me, Brock, how you're going to get to 9K players. Tell me, because I want in on the secret sauce. <laughs> if you're telling me Jaden Ladee is going for a 50 piece, which you get the pace up, like this game's projected, you know, third highest total, I think, on the board. 151 points, both really good offenses. Uh, yeah, I mean, San Diego State, they just don't play many guys. So, you know, the guys that are going to be on the floor, Jaden Ladee at 9K feels tough to click. I mean, some people are going to click it because if they can get to them, they'll see the, you know, the 47 and the, you know, almost the 40 uh, last game, the game before. So, you know, 87 fantasy points, nothing to sneeze at. But he's just, and 31% usage rate 
like double double threat every night can block a few shots shooting 36 percent from three uh, even a 12 percent assist rate because the offense goes through him so uh, i do love me some Jaden ladee as i do love me some of these expensive dudes over 9k i just got to figure out how i'm gonna get there so money we'll have to look and this is like jay said like this is a stackable game because of the cliff right so you pay for Jaden Ladee, he goes out and gets you at 45. Now you have all these other guys. I mean, Parrish at 5,800, Reese Waters at 5,400, Lamont Butler's at 5,500. I like Lamont Butler a lot for tournaments. It's not exciting um, when you when you realize, like, you know, that you've, you're locked into Lamont Butler in a tournament and you're like, what the hell is going to happen? But every now and then he will go absolutely insane and go for a 30 or a 35 – and in tournaments for two thousand dollars, you need some guys that are going to be able to have these type of ceilings at this price point, especially because it saves you some of that coin from the average player salary. Darian Trammell, too, love it. I mean, it's forty two hundred, and he's probably going to be one of my higher owned uh, plays from uh, Game Stack, and as well as just using him as a piece, um, you know, someone that's cheap. Uh, you know, one of these punts, he's 4,200. You can see that that three-piece he put up, and, uh, yeah, it doesn't feel great. But he, he didn't make a shot, you know, had some fouls, um, kind of an ugly game. But before that, I mean, he's rocking an 18, a 16, and a 22, starting to play some minutes. You have to like it. We know what he did last year. He hasn't shot great from three this year. I mean, he's got a decent shot rate, 19%. He has more creation than his 15% assist rate would lead you to believe this year. It's, it's been a little bit of a, a, I don't want to say disappointing, but kind of a down year. You know, we spotlighted him and, and Lamont Butler as their, you know, the power guys returning for this team, and now you're getting him for 4,200. He's a 5,500, 5, at least on talent alone, type player. So uh, Trammell and then Jaden Ladee, like 13K. That's, I mean, now you go back to your mid guys. So now we're talking. Uh, I mean, those are the guys that I like, Eric. Um Parrish and Reese Waters are interesting, though, man. So every, everybody on this side is interesting. Those are the six guys that are – excuse me, the five guys that are really going to get it done for this team. Yeah, there's there's a lot to like about this Aztec side with uh, with Micah Parrish. I mean, he, he comes in at 5.8K, right? So he's below that average starting salary. Um, you know, he is a huge beneficiary of this pace-up spot because he's, he's one of these, like, 3 and D guys that just, you know, he contributes in a lot of different ways. He's shown an ability to get hot before, right? So, like, if you know, if this increased pace translates to a better shooting or a better scoring night for him, like he can, you know, he can definitely make you feel pretty good about paying off his price tag. He can also, you know, he can poke out a steal or two, hand out a couple of assists, right? Like, he's he's definitely a tournament option for me, but I I think I probably prefer him as more of a stacking partner with Ladie. Thirteen percent assist rate in his own right, so. You know, a couple of those assists are going the right direction. You can definitely get things moving in your favor. And then if you want to save a couple hundred more bucks, 400 to be exact, Reese Waters, 5.4K, you know, same setup as as Parrish, right? Uh, a little bit more of the shot-dependent version, right? He, he's not contributing as many defensive or counting stats. You know, we we haven't really seen super consistent play out of him recently, right? Like, he'll go out and get... 34 minutes in that last game and then you know put up 10 minutes two games prior to that so you know it's um it's it's kind of hard to to fully trust him you know he's in this nice total he's getting the pace up so he'll he'll be in the tournament player pool but probably not going much further than that with the waters that makes sense in this in this sense but again like it makes sense in the sense what do you got me going with where are we who am i who is um, this? Who am I? What is, what is even happening? Who are we playing? Um, the, pace <laughs> up, the pace up, though, I, my brain is moving 500 miles a minute, and you're hoping that San Diego State does, too, in this pace up uh, with New Mexico. Um, getting Ladie in there, um, it's uh, just like I wish I wouldn't have to go. God, dude, 9K, dude. Like, 9K, all the guys that are around him. Yeah, but. Um, there is some value there in the lower end, uh, that you know they can bring it to the table. But um, we got a little more in the comments, don't we, Eric? What do we got going on? Yeah, I think uh, I think Brock is answering the call. 
on uh, on how he's going to get up to to a nine K with DE, right? So talked about Dunlap a little bit. Uh, our our guy Cisse is hmm. uh, is is always floating out there, as Mama <laughs> Rocks mentions. You know we're um, uh, we're always we're always waiting for Cisse to get those minutes. If this, yeah. I mean, if this is that point, he can certainly pay off that price tag, right? Yeah, no doubt about it. Curtis Williams, is that a little bit of maybe some some foreshadowing, maybe for a little bit later <laughs> on in the show here that we might get to? Before we do, though, Ease. before we do, though, gonna go, get to the New Mexico side of this game and start with Mike here. A um, little bit cheaper to get into this game at the top of their lineup. Yeah, Jalen House, seventy five hundred. Um, yes, please. 27% usage, 27% shot rate, 25% assist rate, 5% steal rate, and just shoots a ton of threes. Now, he's had all kinds of weird things going on this year, but he's got 40 fantasy point upside in this spot. I uh, love him as a run back option by himself. I love him as – you can get to 2-2 in this game pretty easily. Uh, so, yeah, I'll be using a lot of house. I feel like he's kind of a cash game double-up staple um, in this spot. Donovan Dent um, come crashing back down to earth with, uh, you know, Mashburn getting healthy, House getting healthy. Uh, he carried them for the beginning of the year. Now he's 6,900. Production, it's it's been okay. Um, obviously, we saw the last game. If people are going to look at the last game and think that, you know, that's that's a normal outcome for him, then, then great. I'll play some more Donovan Dent um, at 6,900. It's, it's a good price tag. Another guy that can reach back and get 30. JT Toppin. Um, he's 6,700, man, like just a stud freshman for them. Um, what a fine keeping Amzil basically as a, a rotational piece. Um, he had a big game a few nights ago when he was on the slate. Uh, you know, gets it done by rebounding, uh, shot blocking 7%. Um, so he really gets it done with stock. So at this price tag, uh, he is a stackable partner to Dent, um, to House. Jamal Mashburn, Mama Rocks, uh, I don't know, Mama. I don't know, Mama. We usually agree here, but uh, man, we were paying like 8K for, for Mashburn last year, but that was before Donovan Dent and Nellie Jr. Joseph showed up and <laughs> and taught the arrival of the freshman top end. I mean, he just he scores, but I need a, I need a little bit more than just shooting the basketball from Mashburn at 6,100. I mean, just one of those guys that I – I have a hard time getting behind because he's just super shot dependent. So I, it feels like you're paying for 20 to 25 fantasy points and it just doesn't excite me at 6,100. So uh, yeah, I mean, house dent Toppin, all, all good for me uh, because I like Toppin more than uh, Nelly junior Joseph. Uh, I'll, I'll see if Eric will play any L Nelly. Nelly Jr. Joseph, you know me too mm-hmm. well, Mike. Right? We're basically talking about guys in Junior Joseph and Toppin that profile in almost an identical way, but Toppin is four hundred dollars. Excuse me, three hundred dollars less expensive. Uh, Nelly Jr. Joseph is coming in flat at seven K. I mean, I'm not really in love with this price overall. Um, I do like him on boards and and stocks. Right? Like that's certainly where he contributes. Much like Toppin, um, doesn't exactly have a good shot rate, seventeen percent in that regard. I, I guess the thing for me is like, where does where does his ceiling come from, right? Like, yeah, you know, I mean, he's he's got a he's gotten you fifty before, but it took sixteen boards and seven stocks in a blowout spot, right? I don't think that this game is going to be that kind of game. So, you know, I mean, I, I would like to see more ceiling out of a seven K play. Like, I, I mean logically speaking i'm probably with you that top end would be the preferred option but most people are probably going to be going that way so you know sprinkling in a little nelly as as a you know as a an under own leverage type of play might not be the craziest idea no definitely not um i mean if no matter what I do, I <laughs> just want to play you. Nelly, Nelly, Nelly. I got. I don't know. I, I might have to mix them in a little bit. I, I get it. It might be a little too expensive. Uh, I don't know. It's just you see what you see the ceiling, right? And I get it. The price yeah, is a little time, high yeah. to pay for that ceiling, but I don't know, man. Like, 
I know it took him how many counting stats to get there. I get it, but yeah, you know, just it's there. I get one to play a little. He bit feels like he's like like one of those guys you like to say, Jay, where he's like five hundred to a like if he was six k, it feels yeah, better for tournaments, smash right? Low. Like you would just yeah. smash him on tournaments, but damn, seven k yeah. like to be different is it's tough. It's tough. I get it. Yeah. I get it. Yeah, no doubt about it. All watch right, him, watch him win two K tomorrow. Yeah, one percent. Exactly. Yeah, right. Optimal. Puts up a forty-eight. Yeah, just rubs point, our face in it. Zero point eight percent and goes seven X. <laughs> Either way, that's the showcase games for today. You know, we like to do the showcases for those day one cats and catettes in the in the audience. We appreciate y'all doing that. We know you, or you know, we like to hit the showcase games, but. After that, we'd like to hit some plays and fades from the remaining games um, before we get to the world-famous core four and more, four, more, more, four. So we're each going to give you, uh, in the high tier at least, above what do we do? Above 7,500, right? In the high tier, we're each going to give you a play and a fade. And I'm going first because I can, and I have the microphone, so you will listen to every damn word I have to say. I am all over... Armando Baycott. I was all over Ooh, him the last back. time we were out at 8,300, and he's and he he was he had a great game, and now he's at 81. Absolute smash spot. He went 18, 8, and 4 against him last year. Still way too cheap. Now, the issue that's worked in it's cooked into this price is the potential for a blowout, right? I understand that. So maybe maybe we're leaning more towards cash plays, double up plays and things like that for Baycott. But either way, this is this is still a smash opportunity for Baycott. And I am fading Zakai Ziegler. Yes, I've been seeing his praises and I will continue <laughs> to do so, but I will not pay 8.6K for him. I will not. Even though he had back-to-back 40 bombs? What's wrong with you? Will not. Pay 8.6 for Ziegler right now. Uh, too many other options. Connect. Triple J. Not, you know, it's not, that's not double J, former Intercontinental Champion. J E double F J A double R E double T Jeff Jarrett. No, we're talking about Triple J and then Vescovi, no, no. of course. Um, but I am going to, uh, I'm off Ziegler. That's it. Out on him uh, in this slate coming up. Mike, playing a fade in this high tier. I guess I'll go one play, one fade, because I don't want to hear Jay yell at me tonight. So, <laughs> um, Devin Carter, like, <laughs> what are we doing? How did how did we get here? I know how we got here. We got here because he is the only man remaining that can save Providence basketball. Um, man, man, just sucks that you know, the Hopkins injury, but. What doesn't suck is that now Devin Carter has the ball. And his, it, if we could rerun the usage rate from, like, the last two games, he probably has, like, a 75% usage rate. He literally Ridiculous. has to do everything on this team. And he has to guard their best player on the other side. And he's gone, like, 5 million games straight, even with Hopkins sometimes at 40-plus. What's It's really five straight. But it feels like you just take your pencil and you just write 40-plus – next to Devin Carter, even at 9,600. And then it's Xavier. And what does Xavier like to do? Run up and down the court. So, yeah, this um, this could be another 50 bomb for Devin Carter for sure, but you're going to pay for it. So you better hit on Cissé. You better hit on Hefner. We may talk about a few other uh, yep. guys that you can take some shots on. Hunter Dickinson, I am fading. How dare you? Yes, fading. I know. I know. I know. I know. But it's Oklahoma, Jay. Porter Mosher, you know he's got great defensive schemes. And Kansas team's in a weird spot. Like, the metrics don't say that they're a top-10 team. They kind of got served that up a little bit. I mean, they have a bunch of issues. They don't have any bench. Um, they don't have really any uh, any guys that can kind of space the floor um, outside of Dickinson being one of them. Uh, so it's just kind of one of those things. Hunter Dickinson, for me, 9,900. I get that he's at home. Um I, one, I, I have trouble getting to him. And then two, when I click his name, it it doesn't feel great. Like, I get it. He's got 50 fantasy point upside. Absolutely. But I don't want to try to pay for that knowing that he's the price king and the fact that there's not a ton of value and he got Putter Mosier coming in with the game plan against him. So uh, all that for me is kind of a kind of a yikes there. 
I get it. I get it. Before we move on to Eric's uh, playing fades here, um, are we looking at Devin Carter above 10K the next time we see him? Yeah, I think so. I yeah? Mean, yeah. I think so. And it's hard. And like, I'm like, you have to play him. But then also, I'm like, I don't want to pay 9600 for Devin Carter. Yeah, I understand. <laughs> but but here I, we are. I, I think we're on the same page there. We need an extra like 5000 in the salary. <laughs> like, for doesn't this, work like... that way, sir. Does not work that Little way. Stimulus. I, I've tried. I've tried, trust me. I've written strongly worded emails <laughs> to no or little to no avail. Yeah, and then when you try to do it, it like it won't let you save your lineup. Like it's yeah, really annoying. For whatever reason, those red numbers, right? They won't let you do it. But no, yeah, I get it. But it, I mean, if you're going to spend up for one of those guys, I totally understand going 9.6 for Devin Carter over just under 10K for Dickinson. I understand. Eric, playing a fade in the side tier. Yeah, so we're talking this whole show about how tight pricing is and there's no value and we don't have any money. So <laughs> I'm going to attack this from a holistic standpoint. Oh, man. My, uh, my top tier play is going to be right at the cutoff, as cheap as you can get in the high tier. Guy, that dude. is Harrison Ingram, 7.5K. He is the direct pivot off of a guy called Armando Baycott. A guy that's probably going to be pretty popular. So creating a little bit of leverage. And Ingram's just super steady, right? Like 35-plus fantasy points in six of their last 14 games. His rates across the board are super solid. He's generally overlooked on these larger slates, Every right? So there's time. a lot of things to like. In addition to the fact that, you know, he's going to be within arm's reach of some of these, you know, huge outcomes for a pretty reasonable price, 7.5K, right? Like if that's one of your more expensive players – You've got a bit more flexibility in your build. And then for my fade, going over to Kevin Miller, uh, 7.7K. I mean, the arithmetic on this is pretty simple, right? Like, he gets the Virginia defense. The total's really ugly. I don't want to pay 7.7K for him, <laughs> right? Like, Not I would chance. much rather save 200 bucks and go to Harrison Ingram, for example. So, yep. um, you know, for me, it's a it's a pretty clear fade with, with Miller given the game environment, given the price tag. 131 right. total. Mm. Yeah, no, thank you. Uh, all right, that's high tier players. We're going to roll through some mid, mid, uh, mid plays and fades here. Mama Rocks earlier said they're pl- they're finding themselves too much in the mid. Well, oh, she spelled it right. And fade. Let's go. Mid. Exactly. Well done. <laughs> Don't connect. Uh, 6.3 at Georgia. This is not rocket surgery, fellas and fellettes. <laughs> He's good at okay? basketball. He absolutely is good at basketball. He blasted a really good Mississippi State defense last game for 44 fantasy points. And he hasn't needed to play many minutes over the last two weeks, but now it's conference play. I expect Connect to connect the dots in my lineup hey. in the mid-tier. I am, however, not connecting with Stephen Crowell. 6.6K, the forward for Wisconsin. Toughed it out, you know, yep. with, the knee, with the knee. Um, Don't really like that. Uh, I like the toughness. I don't like that from a fantasy perspective, though. <laughs> Tough um, points. If, if you can – do I get grit points? <laughs> like, is that – can we get something for grit? Um, 2.75. You know who has grit is Northwestern. Ooh. They're coming to town. That's a tough matchup for Crow as well. Um, can you think about the tourney upside? Yeah, I think you can. Um, probably a little bit risky for cash play, though. So, um, yeah, fading crowd. Mike, what are you playing? You play? Give it one play. All right. One fade. All right. DJ Horn, North Carolina State. He's 6,900. Played every minute against North Carolina. Uh, Louisville is, uh, well, I guess they're – I don't know. I guess they're good at basketball now since they beat Miami, but uh, <laughs> that's college basketball. Imagine trying to be an expert at this. Uh, DJ Horn, 6,900. going to play every minute. Good rates. I like him. I like really the whole North Carolina team. I'm just trying to figure out how the hell I can play these guys together. Um, Cause you don't know who's going to be on the floor. Mr. Kevin Keats. Anyway, my fade is going to be Ezra Manjon. He is 7,000 at Ole Miss. Uh too much. Chris Beard is there. Uh, they play good defense. Not as good as they, you know, are going to play. Do too, they play fast? Scarier. They don't play that fast either. So mm. yeah, it's just not a lot of possessions for seven K, man. So yeah, no, no, uh, no Ezra for me. Eric, tell us what you got in the mid. 
Ooh, I'm noticing a theme here with these mid picks. I'll uh, I'll go over to my guy Jaden Pierre. Uh, I I know that we were talking about uh, all of the insane usage that that Carter has scooped <laughs> up uh, in light of that injury, but Pierre, I mean, he's he's seeing a pretty big lift in his own regard. In those two games, he's played 73 of 80 available minutes, so he's out there. All the time, he's got 27 and 28 fantasy points in those games that Hopkins has missed. And, I mean, he's the other, like, 25% usage <laughs> guy if, yeah. if Carter's got 75, right? So, definitely getting a nice boost. High assist rate. I mean, if you want to get kind of weird and, and pair him up, you know, crazier things have happened. They are in that pace-up spot at home. And then for my fade, a guy that has personally lost me a ton of money on some slates this year, <laughs> Otega Owe, uh, 6.1K, like no thank you whatsoever. Um, this road environment at Kansas is absolutely terrifying. And here of late, basically right around the time that I started playing him, he's not on the court anymore. He's played 22 minutes in the first two conference games. I, I mean, like, if you if you really want to get freaky in tournaments, you can. But, <laughs> no. I mean, even even for me, like that's that's probably a bridge too far. King of the contrarian. <laughs> Tonight's nineties night, nineties R and B night. Right. It is always nineties R and B night. R&B. First of all, it is always nineties uh, R and B night. And Corey hopping in there, connectors on my. I can't quit you, team. I wish I knew how to quit you. Yeah. yeah well, well, we ain't quitting him tonight. Or tomorrow. Yeah, his his I can't game. quit you team actually wins yeah. in money. My I can't quit you team just drains my balance. <laughs> just drains it. It's because it's because he's got that. the hots for everyone that's six point two k. That's that's relatable. Um, it's a life right, choice, the business let's decision. Hit, let's hit some low plays before getting to those core fours. Um, Garway Duel forty two hundred for Providence. Who's going to step up for the Friars? I don't know, <laughs> but I but somebody that I only have to pay four point two k to get into the game in an awesome game environment. That last time out, he played thirty three minutes. I mean, yeah, he's a freshman, but we've seen the flashes. And basically, at this point, excuse me, can this he point, get you fifteen? Look, yeah, when we were looking earlier, like oh, where's the did. value, right? Where is the value? Um, this is some value. You take the points <laughs> and you move on in this slate, right? Like that's what you do, Mike. Dude, like forty-two hundred played thirty-three minutes and he didn't do anything. I watched the game <laughs> and like still yeah. found his way to fourteen fantasy points. Has right? so, pulse will play. Like, yeah, this, exactly. And you just fall your way into stuff. <laughs> at point. So I'll look at uh, Dennis Parker. Also, I, I talked about liking this North Carolina State side. I think for tournaments, him or Michael O'Connell. Sorry, Jay. That's two of them. Uh, playing Louisville, I mean they're under. I mean they're right there, you know. I mean the five thousand, like whatever stuff. Michael McConnell's there too. Uh, they're good pivots. Um, I, I don't know, man. Like, I get that Casey Moore sells fifty four hundred, and I get that Jaden Taylor's annoying me with his like five eight price tag. But dude, they're gonna score like eighty points against Louisville. I don't care that it's at home at Louisville, and they just beat Miami. It's still Louisville, so. Give me some of these North Carolina State guys. I'm, I'm a little interested, Eric. Uh, who's rounding out our uh, our low play for you? Man, I'm going. Uh, I'm going right back to well, what in most weeks would be the biggest upset on the slate. <laughs> uh, last week, not so much as basically every single top ten team uh, got got plucked off. But Curtis Williams for the Louisville Cardinals. Uh, I mean, they're they're coming off of that huge upset against Miami. And Williams was tremendous in that game, right? He had 25 fantasy points in just 33 minutes. And he did all of this only shooting four of 12. So plenty of meat left on the bone. Takes a ton of threes overall. The The thing with, with Williams in particular, you really need Trey White to be out, right? So, um, you know, some news that we'll be watching heading into tomorrow morning's tip-off. But yeah, if, if, White's, if White is out of the way, there is a ton to like about Curtis Williams, including his guard forward eligibility. Hey, fantasy baseball season's right around the corner, and we love a good starting pitcher with relief pitcher eligibility uh, in our lineups there. Just like a little guard forward action in our DFS lineups. 
going to hop to our core fours, but Cam hopping in the live chat. I was waxing this Nebraska team that somehow beat Purdue by double digits. Well, this is the, this, what a time to be alive. <laughs> this, is what, this is the, this is the sport we love to talk about. And Who is the underdog? To to figure out. And uh, right. Yeah. Was, was a, was it a top? Oh, snap. Team? I need, oh, I need like two more fantasy points to win the dollar. <laughs> With two Yo. minutes to go. It's getting a live sweat here as we drop into our core fours here. So let's do that. Let's get into our cash core first. And I'm out on the course tonight. We're going to go to Eric. <laughs> You're a core play for me, though. <laughs> oh, bow, and bow. Mike, Mike might have you tap in for the uh, tournament core as he's watching this sweat yeah, no live. Kidding. The uh, The cash core will start with one of the players that you showcase, Jay, Armando Baycott, 8.1K. Just too cheap, right? The the floor is super steady. He should probably be like a 9K guy, right? So we will continue clicking that button for as long as he is underpriced. Uh, next to him will be our cover boy, Wade Taylor, 7.6K. We talked about him in the showcase. I mean, super steady. There's a lot of things to like. He's getting that pace up spot at home against Kentucky. Uh, someone that we also talked about. As the only other person getting usage for Providence, Jaden Pierre at 5.8K. And last but certainly not least, Jalen House for New Mexico, 7.5K. You put those five, those four together, and you have 5.2K left per player. So another couple, couple of low tier, couple of salary savers mixed in there. And I think you've got a pretty nice mid tier build with this one overall. You know I love that, and you know I got Corey does too. But Mike, let's get to that, <laughs> let's get to that tournament core here. Uh, try to win his two K. Yeah, uh, Joel Soriano. Start with him. He's just got so much upside for an eight K guy, but he's so volatile, right? Especially with all the guards taking shots around him. So we have to look at Joel Soriano for tourneys. Uh, Garway Duall, as Jay pointed out, forty two hundred. He scored basically fifteen fantasy points and literally did not any, did not do anything but run up and down the court. So. They need someone else. He's really the only other guy. If you want to be cute and sneaky, you can try to go back to Corey Floyd, but whatever. Burned me two times in a row. Uh, Dalton Connect uh, as a tournament play. Uh, he kind of volatile just because of all the other guys. I mean, we mentioned it. Like, there's a lot of guys. Like, AD randomly went off the other night for, what, 24 and 10. Like, Ziegler has gone off a few times. I know they went off together, but it's, it's kind of tough to – See connect every single game go bonkers because you have Triple J there. Vescovi can get it going. Ganey hasn't really done much lately, so uh, he's going to be a tournament play. And then Harrison Ingram at seventy five hundred, uh, really as a as a pivot off of Baycott as a guy that is basically giving you you can pretty much print thirty fantasy points um, <laughs> uh, right there with some upside to it. So that gets you into that four and a half x range, uh, you know, creeping up into the five x range for sure. So. Uh, yeah, man, I'm, I'm excited for this slate. Uh, I wish uh, Cam hadn't told me that uh, I will wax Nebraska, so I was hoping to open up my app and see that uh, I won the dollar, but it looks like I finished I finished seventh, well, technically third. Uh, but I doubled my money in the dollar today. I'm uh, you're trying a little something new, trying to bring you guys some more value. Your boy has been using uh, some new tools and putting his own projections, so hopefully we bring in some more of this bread coming soon. Love it, love it, and of course, using that tournament core, it's going to leave you six k left per player. So uh, nice and juicy options there, still on the table. If you choose, thanks for sticking around with us. We wanted to make sure we got all of that great information to you here, leading into the Saturday slate, uh, gentlemen. Anything uh, on our way out? Uh, yeah, I mean, we might have some some shows coming up for you. I mean, I might jump on here and. and... And do a Saturday or Sunday show. You never know. I think we're going to be back Sunday night for uh, uh, the recap show. And then probably be back here Monday because there's a already a, a posted slate for Tuesday. So you know it's going to be a 10K or 15K to first. So we'll be back with you guys, man. It's it's time, guys. It's time. That's right. Damn right it's time. Once again. And, you know, we, we said it earlier. College basketball is about to be king. NFL's winding down. We know there's a, there's only a handful of games left. We get it. And I forget who it was earlier, maybe Shane or Brock that said, uh, probably Brock that said, like, Saturday. Yeah, Saturday slates right now. Saturday, a little bump because yeah, of NFL. It's tough, right? But uh, absolutely, there it is right there, Brock. But uh, 
Our time is coming, Eric. Our time is coming. Time is absolutely coming. Hang in there with us as we sweat out uh, seventh place finishes and larger prize pools <laughs> on uh, on DraftKings. And look, like you know, it's kind of been the theme for uh, for the show all night. Really hard to get to some of these pay up options, so finding creative ways to do so will probably be the key to winning 2K or punching your king of the bracket ticket tomorrow. Good luck to everybody. Make sure you follow us all on Twitter. Uh, make sure you follow at one and done CBB and you also follow at get green screens. There it is scrolling right across the bottom of your screen there. Follow us all on X. If you follow me tonight, right now, tomorrow, anytime I will follow you back. I will smash that follow button and follow you back button immediately. Deal. Just do it. You got yourself a damn deal. I will do it. Show us some love and we will show you some love back. Thanks for hanging out with us. Thank you, Mama Rocks. Thank you, Corey, Shane, Cam, Brock, and our guy, Nape C. Hustle, hanging out with us all night long. We appreciate that. We appreciate all of you for staying up late with us for a little one and done after dark. Good luck on this slate tomorrow. Our time is up. Your time is now. Now let's get this bread, baby. Cute. Thanks for stopping by the office. Get your fantasy prescription by subscribing to the channel and checking out drrodo.com. And until the next visit, be well and take care.